Welcome to part 2 of my series of videos on the HP 41C calculator and its peripherals. In this video I'm going to go through the card reader that uh, attaches to the HP 41C calculator and um, I'll show you um, how it connects. So I've removed the, um, the blank port uh, from here uh, to make room for the card reader there. It just slots in like so. So the purpose of the card reader is to uh, write data and read data from these little cards here. And they're um, little magnetic cards, two sided. So one side you would feed in like so and then to get the second side you'd feed the second side in. So um, uh, magnetic cards. So inside the card reader is a, um, a read-write head, a little bit like you, what you would see in a uh, tape tape deck from you know back in the day. So what you can use them for is storing programs and data on these cards. So you might have spent quite a while inputting a program that you've made and spent quite some time and actually designing the program and putting it together and typing it in and. Uh, of course, uh, you don't want to lose it. Um, uh, you won't lose the program by turning the calculator off, um, uh, but you may lose the program if you leave the batteries out for some time or something goes wrong. And um, it's quite nice to have uh, the data sitting on these cards. So, um, for instance, I've got a, uh, a little pouch with some cards here and um, I've got some programs on some of these cards here that I've recorded to them. And uh, in the back here I've got some blanks as well. So first of all I'll show you loading a program and I've got a, uh, a program here called Gravity which is um, it's a game where you have to land a, a lunar module on the moon or any other planet you can set the gravitational pull and you have to fire the uh, uh, the rockets to um, slow the descent down so that you get a nice smooth landing yeah so I'll show you how to um, to load that in I'm just going to clear that and just to show you that there's nothing in in memory here uh, if we do a catalog one we get no programs so I'm just going to go and feed uh, this gravity through so this gravity takes three uh, sides so uh, side one side two and then on this second card I've got side three so uh, it's just sitting at the prompt there and you see on the screen ready two of three so it's asking for side two of three and now I'll work in side three and working okay so it's stored the program in the memory uh, it's a good idea to pack the memory too it's a function um, that compresses all the um, the information into one block and uh, and sets the calculator up for, for feeding in more programs so I'll just go ahead and do that so shift go to point point so packing there And if I go to catalog one here, we can see gravity is in there. And if I hit program there, we can see I've got 271 registers free for programs. So that gravity program is, is taking a little bit up. Um, and if I want to run the gravity program, I know it's it's called gravity because we saw in the catalog there it's called gravity. It was fairly quick. I'll just slow that down. Or gravity. Um, so now the uh, program's in memory. I can uh, run the program. But first of all, uh, this particular program just needs you to put in the gravity uh, variable for the moon or whatever planet you choose to um, to land on. The moon's not um, too challenging. Um, but and then uh, execute alpha. Gravity. 
Now it's not a QWERTY keyboard so it is a bit um, slower to type on than, than normal obviously because of the layout of the keys it can't easily be a QWERTY keyboard. And then uh, so as soon as I hit alpha again it's going to take it out of alpha mode and execute the gravity program. Uh, okay so it's calculating there, it's telling you what the gravity is, you've got 5456 fuel, you're coming down at 500 feet per second, altitude is 5000 and when you get to zero you can make a burn so you might put in 100 for the burn and we'll have a look at how fast we're going now so if you used a bit of fuel we're still coming down at 416 feet per second so you might want to um, so it's just a matter of judging uh, the altitude versus the uh, speed of descent so yeah, altitude's nearly half now, so yeah. But anyway, that that's just showing you that the uh, the program's in there. If I leave that to uh, run, it'll just crash because we're picking up speed. So um, yeah, that's a handy way of um, storing your programs. You can also store data. Also, uh, um, Okay, so if I want to, for instance, um, if I wanted to save uh, that gravity program to a another card or two, choose a couple of blank cards here. Now oh, we hit the ground at minus 370 feet per second, so yeah, made quite a big crater on the moon there, I think. Yeah, so um, if I want to save that... Um, program. It's automatically gone into user mode this program as well so I'm just going to take it out of user mode. I'll explain more about the modes later on. Uh, so we can uh, get two blank cards here and we put the program to the start of the gravity program so go to point gravity And that puts the calculator at the start of the gravity program. So 0, 1 label gravity. Now, if I feed, we're in program mode here, so that's set to write rather than read. These cards are blank anyway, but. on these cards here. If I execute a verify, I can verify that the cards have written OK at least and what type of card they are. So it's prompting to put a card through. So that was track 3. So that was the second card. You'll see it pop up with the track number and a number beside uh, P. And P is the program. I think I have. See if I can slow this down. Yeah. No. No. P means it's a program card, and it's T R one was track one of a program, and this is track two. So I know that they are successfully written. So what I can do now is reset the calculator by holding the arrow key while I turn it on. Memory lost. We've got uh, nothing in pro program memory there. We've got 46 registers. That's the default again. Uh, so if I uh, feed this back in, ready, two or three, and then we want three or three. some error so that may not have written correctly yeah not liking that one could be there we go so now we should have in the catalog gravity we do and you'll see I'll try and slow that down no 
yeah, eight registers left out of the 46 we had by default. So that means that we can only put another eight registers worth of program in, which is not a lot. So um, let's execute the size command again just to uh, crank up that program memory size. And we'll take the um, data registers down to uh, say 20 and we should have plenty plenty of room there now we've got 261 registers free there for programs now so there's a whole lot more you can do with the, the card reader I won't go into too much detail um, but just one other thing is um, on this particular card this is a data card so it differs from your program cards uh, it doesn't store programs it stores uh, data now um, I went through data storage in the video I did with the HP 97 and this uh, calculator works in a very similar way. Um, I'll just quickly go through it now and then I'll show you how the data um, cards work. So if you, uh, you, you've got a set of data storage registers and you can access those directly. Um, so any register from 0 to 99 you can access directly and the remaining uh, data registers that you may have allocated you can um, access indirectly if it's above 99. Uh, I may go into um, indirect addressing in a later video. Uh, but just very very briefly here, if you wanted to um, store say the number 5 in register 1, so let's store 5 in register 1, we'll clear it and if I recall register 1 now, we should get 5 because that's what's sitting in the memory of the register and if I want to put the number 10, say, and store that in register 6 we can recall 6, we get 10, we recall 5 sorry, recall 1, and we get 5 so I've got registers 1 and 6 with information in them. 1 is holding 5 and 6 is holding the value 10. Now um, I will just go ahead and clear the registers with this command. C L R G clear register. And um, now if we recall 1, there's nothing in there. Recall 6, nothing in there. Now this card I've pre-prepared and it's holding values in registers 0 through 15 I think it is so I just plonk the um, uh, the number of the register I just made th its contents so register 0 is 0, register 1 equals 1 register 2 uh, right up to um, register 15 which holds the number 15 now uh, you can see there that these registers are all blank um, so nothing in there, but if I feed this in, it should populate the registers with the information that's on this card. So if I recall 0, we get 0. Recall 1, we get 1. 2, recall 3, we get 3. Recall 4, and so on. So it's filled the registers up with data from this card here. So yeah, that's just a basic look at the HP41 card reader. And um, its part number is 82104A. So um, all the peripherals and um, whatnot have uh, specific part numbers. So thanks for watching. I will be posting more videos on the uh, peripherals and the ins and outs of the HP41. Bye.